Hi everyone, this is Frank Westfall here, and in this video I will show you how you can start using AI, otherwise known as artificial intelligence, in your daily life. It can actually be practical and useful and save you time. In the last couple years, we've heard a lot about artificial intelligence. In late 2022, OpenAI launched one of the first publicly available AI systems called ChatGPT 4.0 and it is an impressively capable tool. Microsoft has teamed up with OpenAI to integrate AI into the Microsoft Bing search engine. And in this video, I will show you how to use it. Please consider subscribing to my channel for more computer tutorial videos and other interesting and informative videos. Now, let's use some AI. For anyone who doesn't know, this is the Microsoft Edge internet browser, and it is an internet browser just like Google Chrome, or Apple Safari or Mozilla Firefox. If it is not already on your desktop or on the taskbar, you can search for it just by going to the search box and typing edge. And here it is, just click it and we can run it. I'm not quite ready to set edge as my default browser. I currently use Chrome, but I will say this, after using the new OpenAI feature on edge browser, I might have to switch from Chrome to Edge because it is pretty cool. So now that we have the Edge browser open, if we go up here and go to Discover and click it, it shows us that we have this option to start using the integrated OpenAI functionality of this web browser. So I'm gonna click Start Chatting and this requires us to be signed into the Edge browser. If you don't have a Microsoft account, you can set one up for free the actual web address for that is https colon forward slash forward slash signup dot live dot com. So since I already have a Microsoft account, I'm going to sign into mine right here and enter my password. Uh, I don't want to synchronize data just yet. Now we have this chat tool here. This is not a chat tool that we are used to, like chatting with your friends or sending someone messages and receiving messages. This is talking to artificial intelligence, which can answer in-depth, complex, and very specific questions. So I'm going to start with something relatively easy, just to give you an idea of what this thing can do. Maybe I'm having a barbecue and I want to cook some medium rare steaks for some friends. How do I cook a steak medium rare on a grill? Here's the answer. To cook a medium rare steak on a grill, you should preheat your grill to around 450 to 500 degrees Fahrenheit. Once your grill is hot, place your steak on the grill and sear it for a quick moment. Then move it to a lower heat area set around 275 to 325 degrees. Let it cook here for three to five minutes per side. For a one inch thick steak, you should grill for three to five minutes per side. Now that is a pretty specific answer. Now. What if I have a two inch steak? Let's get more specific. How do I cook a two inch thick steak, medium rare on a grill? Question mark. Oh, and I just noticed up there too, it shows us different meat temperatures and what they should look like. To cook a two inch thick steak, medium rare on a grill, you should bring the steak to room temperature by leaving it out for at least an hour before cooking. Preheat your grill to medium high heat once the grill is heated, season your steak with coarse salt and freshly ground pepper. Place the steak in the middle of the grill, making sure it is well coated with cooking spray. Grill for four to five minutes per side or 18 to 20 minutes in total for medium rare. Use a meat thermometer to be sure your steaks are cooked just how you like them. Now that is a very specific answer. Okay, so cooking is one thing. You can see right there, like if I just throw some random stuff at it, how do I make an apple pie from scratch? I mean, does that beat calling your mother? So let's move away from cooking. Let's ask it some other stuff. Today I went downhill skiing and the snow is starting to get a little melty. So how about this? What is the best wax to use on downhill skis 
during the spring when the snow is starting to melt? And you'll notice these are specific questions. The more specific you are with the questions, the more detailed the answer will be that the AI gives you. Here we go. There are many types of skew axes available for different snow conditions and temperatures. However, for spring snow melt conditions, you might want to consider using a universal temperature wax that can work well in a wide range of temperatures. Some popular universal temperature waxes include Swix F4 and Toco Express Rub-On Universal Wax. So if I know nothing about skiing and I want to go out and have a good day, I don't have to become a wax expert to have a day of fast skiing. Now, how about something that we all face at some point? Car repairs. How do I change a battery in a 2010 Toyota Corolla? Here are the steps. I've changed many batteries, so I'm just gonna read through this and verify. Disconnect the negative terminal. Disconnect the positive terminal. Remove all the bolts from the tie down and take out the battery. Clean the disconnected terminals and the surface under the battery. Place in the new battery. Screw in all the tools and tighten them down. Connect the positive terminal of the battery first. That all looks good. Let's see. Please note that you may need to remove parts of the cowl or air filter housing to find the battery in your Corolla. Also, when you reconnect the terminal, your radio presets are likely to be cleared out. That's a good side note, and it's true. In some Corollas, you may need to re-enter a security code to get your radio to work again. The one thing I would say that it missed in this is that when you're reconnecting the battery, you wanna be really careful that you don't create a short when those battery terminal cables are loose, but that's gonna get you 90% of the way there. And if you do throw a spark, it happens. Now, let's get even more specific. Can you find a YouTube video of someone changing the battery on a 2010 Toyota Corolla? Let's see what it can do. Look at that. <laughs> okay, let's see how accurate it is. How to replace remote key battery, Toyota Corolla. How to remove a battery from a 2010 Toyota, what is it? Let's see what that is. It's a Corolla. So it got that right. How to replace a 2009 to 2010 Toyota Corolla key fob. Oh, this is interesting. You'll notice I didn't specify car battery. I just said battery. So it's including both the key fob battery and the car battery. This is what you'll notice when using AI is that it is highly intelligent. And the more intelligent our questions are, the more accurate its responses will be. I didn't think to specify the type of battery because I wasn't even thinking about the fact that there's a battery in the key fob. But the AI right away knows that there's not just one battery in this car. There is a battery in the key fob and a battery to start the engine and run the electrical system in the car. So it shows me both sets of results. Now, what if we wanna go bigger? What if I'm thinking about starting a business and I wanna know how to go from a sole proprietor to an LLC? How do I start an LLC in the state of Minnesota in the year 2023? Okay, here's our response. Choose a name for your LLC in Minnesota. Choose a registered agent in Minnesota. File organizational paperwork with the state that should have said, file articles of incorporation with the state. That's a little vague. Prepare an LLC operating agreement. Obtain an EIN for your LLC in Minnesota. Make sure you're paying taxes on the business if it makes money. That's a good template. Anyway, these are just some quick examples, but I'm sure you can imagine how useful this can be in our daily lives once we get used to the idea that AI can answer very in-depth questions with a high degree of accuracy. I would very quickly like to ask everyone to just be careful when using these types of tools. Although they do seem to be pretty accurate, there is always a risk that AI has the wrong answer. And that could be a serious problem if we were asking it personal health questions, for example. Please be safe when using these tools and always remember that like humans, AI is not perfect. 
we should always use our own discretion and experience in conjunction with things we learn on the internet and when using AI tools such as this. Thank you very much for watching. If you found this interesting or helpful, please consider subscribing to my channel and bye for now.